So three, two, one. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Just Learn Crypto Show. Uh, today on this episode, we've got Jedediah Taylor, who's the CEO of Decent.Bet, or DBet, as some of you may have heard. Uh, he's going to be teaching us a little bit about Decent Bet. I don't know too much about it, other than uh, it came around in 2017, and it was on my radar, and um, a lot of people have uh, been telling me to look into it again, and I know you guys were involved out in World CryptoCon uh, out in uh, Vegas last oh, a couple weeks ago now. So, uh, Jedediah, thanks for coming on the show. It's our first time meeting, and uh, let's see what we can strum up here on video, man. Yeah, bro. Um, appreciate you having me. Uh, we've chit-chatted for a long time, and it's good to finally do something a little more formal and create a video and hopefully teach some people some things about crypto and the project and life and who we are. Life and, and love. And, and I just got to say, man, you've got, like, my favorite name to just say. Like, it's just such a cool name, Jedediah. Like, it's such a <laughs> rare name, man. You don't hear that name that are you named after, like, uh, like a family member or something? No, so my mom just like fell in love with the name. Uh, okay. It's from the Hebrew Bible. It means beloved of God. Okay. And so she just like felt that I had some complications at birth. Like oh, I no was uh, born in a little over 10 months. So I was in an incubator for the first two months uh, after being born. And the fact that I like survived and made it through it and stuff, she kind of felt like I was uh, gift that i made it through it so sweet so you've been a warrior since day one man respect sweet man so uh i mean like i said we've this is our first time actually talking uh you know not through messaging so uh looks like first dated up man so tell me a little bit about yourself sure so um grew up in reno in las vegas so okay. kind of nevada always associated with gambling uh right so i've been on the blackjack tables since i was 16 years old and was counting cards and uh, learned at a very young age that vegas will either make you or break you and yeah. so you either play against the odds or learn how to put the odds in your favor so i started counting cards i always like strategic type games where you mm -hmm. can create like a mental advantage and with blackjack it's easy when you start to count cards and then when poker started to emerge you can break down statistics and likelihood of winning how many outs you have and what percentage that gives you to win in relation to your pot odds is what it's called so what's it called sir yeah. um pot odds pot so it's odds. like yeah, so like four to one on your money, right? So if you're four to one on your money, you need 25% chance of winning to mm -hmm. break even. Because okay. if you win one out of four, then you're going to get four times your money. You're going to lose the other three. But the one time you win, you're going to break even. But as soon as you get above that 25% threshold, so you're at like 30, 35, 40, 50%, maybe 80%, um, then that's a winning, it, over time, it's a winning strategy. Awesome. But the key to gambling in general and, and with crypto, I think investing in general is managing your bankroll and diversifying and giving yourself the longevity to be able to see through the winners. Um, so, you know, just because it's one out of four doesn't mean it's going to come one out of four. It means that it's 25% over time. I mean, you can flip heads or tails and although heads or tails is a 50-50 chance, it doesn't mean you can't flip heads 10 times in a row. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, right. You have to have that sustainability. And what I advise people in crypto is to, you know, diversify and not put all their eggs in one basket. So as yeah. soon as you make an investment and you see yourself in profit, get your money out your initial investment out and play with in Vegas, we call it house money mm -hmm. because it's winnings. It's not out of your pocket. So yeah. It's, house money. it's what I try. Like I came into crypto with like zero investing background. Uh, also not, I'm not a gambler. I've been to a casino three times in my life. So uh, we probably have a little bit of a different background in that sense, but that was one of the first things when I started researching investing into crypto and Bitcoin that I was like, that was one of the main 
kind of tones that a lot of smart investors were trying to share that message with new investors. And it's like, get your initial investment out. And I think in 2017, when I like, uh, I got in towards the end of 2016, but I feel a lot of, you know, we had that huge rush and surge of new people coming in 2017. And a lot of them, I think greed just took over. It was just like, yeah. it's never going to stop Go. I don't need to pull my money out. It's going to keep going up to the moon. We're all getting Lambos. And, uh, you know, I really took that advice to heart. Um, you know, my circle had quite a few, you know, well-to-do people in it that gave me that advice and were like, Hey man, like, you know, look into the, these different investing strategies and just trust your gut and don't invest into projects that you're not going to be interested in enough to actually do research on. Right. So, you know, there's a reason I never invented, invested in uh Denta coin because I don't give a shit about researching <laughs> dentists. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like some of my first crypto inv investments after, um, Bitcoin obviously being Litecoin and Ethereum. Um, but I got really interested in uh, Decentraland. I thought it was in, in 2017, they had, you know, they were doing their ICO. Um, they had this whole, uh, are you familiar with Decentraland, Mana? Have you seen that one? Um, I think so. I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. Is That's it okay. like, it's a monopoly type thing, isn't it's, it? It's uh, so what it is, it's, it's a decentralized virtual reality. So people, the, what basically through the ICO, they were selling their mana tokens. And then those tokens, you can buy land in Decentraland, which is this VR world that they created. Um, and, you know, you can build houses, businesses, you have your avatars, you can get cars, all these different things uh, and build up. You could even, and what really interested me about it initially was thinking, if we have a decentralized world with its own internal economy, and no barriers of entry for anyone in the world. Anyone can log on, start walking around in this virtual reality world and have a real currency, whether it be Bitcoin or their token, which is mana. Um, you know, what's going to stop people from building some dope VR casinos where people can just go in and, and gamble and, you know, VR conferences and stuff like that. So uh, I was pretty interested in it, man. I thought it was cool. I know it's still around. I, I haven't really followed up with it in a while, to be honest. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing right now. But, um, you know, that's something I think a lot of new investors need to do is, like, find something you think is cool because then you're actually going to be interested in having, you know, reading articles about it and learning about the founders and, like, seeing what they're going to be doing next, checking out their roadmap. And you just, you're not going to have the, the drive to do that if you're researching some fucking coin about dentists. <laughs> sure. Yeah, and have fun with what you're doing, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, you, you, everybody is trying to make money and trying to do well for themselves as they should. But if you're not enjoying what you're doing, then what's it really all for? Like, yeah. just to torture yourself at the end of the day and studying yeah, dentists man. when you don't want to study dentists. So <laughs> exactly, man. Doing what you love is. Uh, you know, such a key component of just enjoying life. And, yeah. The best uh, thing I found with crypto was at the beginning, I was like, my big passion in life is sales. I've been a door to door salesman since I was 17. Um, I, I run, I have run and, and ran some of the largest like door to door and direct marketing sales companies in Canada here. Um, and I absolutely love sales, like selling something you're passionate about, meeting new people, the, the communication and relationships and the way you can grow your network doing sales. Um, and then when I got into Bitcoin, I was like, how can I sell Bitcoin? You know, how can I merge my two, you know, my, this new passion that I have for blockchain and crypto and merge it with sales. And uh, I started just kind of being a broker uh, for a couple different companies and I uh, loved it, man. I was just going around like the Bitcoin Jehovah Witness, like fucking telling all my friends about it. And <laughs> I had, I, I, uh, I, I labeled myself as a mobile Bitcoin ATM. So I like had my coal car mm -hmm. stickered up mobile Bitcoin ATM. Um, and that's how I kind of got into crypto, man. That was like most of 2017 was just going around to conferences, meeting people, networking, uh, selling crypto, teaching new people how to download a wallet. Um, and I really loved like trying like being that on ramp for people, man. And that's kind of what inspired me to start doing these videos was to create an on ramp for people onto other projects because, you know, I'm not a tech, I'm not a techie guy, man. I don't do any mining. Uh, I'm horrible at math. I don't do trading. Um, <laughs> I'm just a hodler, man. Um, and, but I really love the community and all these cool projects. So I was like, you know what, let's, let's start getting some people like you and, 
uh, you know, like I had Andreas on the other day, John McAfee, like people that people want to hear from and just have them tell their story, man. What, so how did you get into crypto? Like how long have you been in the game? Um, so I started looking into crypto back in, I want to say like 2013. It was a, a long time back when like dark coin was still around. Okay. Um, before the dash days. Um, so I started looking into like mining and it was super interesting. And then actually like dove in full speed in 2016. Okay. Um, and what do you mean by full speed? Like you sold your house and pawned all your, your worldly possessions and went financially <laughs> all in or. <laughs> I didn't pull a DD. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if that's what you mean. No, um, it was, it was more of like a commitment of time and focus so i made investments um heavier investments than i did historically and i started to really focus and what were you doing and learn and so is is, is dbet your uh like your main job right now it's what you do 24 7 kind of thing yeah and it's literally 24 7 so mean, what were you doing before like weekend. what was your background before getting into dbet full-time so, you know, going way back to my early 20s was always like a sales and marketing professional. Okay. Um, and I excelled, you know, very much in, in sales and marketing and actually caught the attention of one of the VCs that was invested in, in the company that I was working for. So he actually recruited me and I worked for right around 10 years in private equity and venture capital. Oh, cool. Um, so that's where it goes back to like portfolio management and diversification and things like this and sustainability. Um, that background helped me a lot with, with Bitcoin. And then the majority of the VC's investments were actually SaaS based companies. So they were technology software based companies. So I got a, you know, really large appetite for not just how to invest and, and what to do. I had one of the greatest mentors I could ever dream of in that regard, but I also got exposed to technology and those two things coming together was really like the perfect fit for crypto right because at the end of the day it's investing in technology and understanding technology and then also managing the risk and investing responsibly um and without that background you know it would have been a, a much tougher road than it than it was for me but uh, i was that's that's cool, man. That's cool that we like we kind of have the same like we both have sales background and obviously a passion for sales. But uh, the the complete polar opposite is I didn't get my first I didn't own my first computer till literally just over a year ago. Um, wow. I yeah, man. I did like I mean even getting into crypto, everything was initially on my phone, um, <laughs> and like like everything, man. All the education. Uh, you know, I the first video I ever saw. Um, was Andreas Antonopoulos's introduction to Bitcoin? Mm, that was and one of my, if not my very first, it was. It probably was my first. But yeah. he's like my idol. Yeah, and, man. Uh, I can speak in, in so long. There's this one video that I saw of his where he speaks about like the impact that is the, I guess, more experience that his parents had in Greece. Yep. when the economy collapsed there and their pensions and their retirement and their bank accounts just like dwindled away into nothing they were too old to enter back into the workforce and that's where his kind of connection and epiphany of the importance of bitcoin came in and that to me was just like sold yeah you know, this makes so much sense for people it's just like it's so rare to have someone in the space who's like so public and I, I would consider a huge influencer um not necessarily an influencer on the price of anything but an influencer on the sentiment and like the the community of crypto but um you know just be so consistently on point consistently yeah. producing content he's like i don't there's nothing I don't think he's ever said that like has created a large amount of people being like, he's a fucking idiot. Like he's so well. I don't know anybody man. that said, I'm, I don't think that I've heard one negative comment about it. I told, I actually, I, so, I totally yeah, agree I with you. Totally agree. I think everyone's first uh, taste of crypto should be watching that introduction to Bitcoin video because he, uh, he doesn't even dive into the technology. He explains 
the psychology behind why he believes in it so much and why it's important and where we've been with money and where we're going with money. And it was just that, that like I had people trying to explain Bitcoin to me, like face to face just through talking. And I was just like, man, like, I don't, I, I don't even own a computer. What the fuck are you talking about? Mining <laughs> and like algorithms and uh, encryption and SHA-2 file. Like I literally, man, no background in any of that stuff. Um, I could barely use friggin' MS Paint. Um, and like, he breaks it down in a simple way, so right? Simple, like these real man. life, real life examples. It's not overly technical, like most yeah. explanations of Bitcoin, as as you're referring to. It just that that whole analogy with his parents and why yeah. it was important was like that was a real life example of why Bitcoin's important, mm -hmm. and it made me fall in love with. Technology. yeah man. and i agree and he's a huge advocate and like a gateway for the space and you know that's what you are you know and i respect a lot of what you do like just your whole group and this this interview platform whatever you want to call it of just learned crypto is like you really approach it from a organic simple straightforward raw way that mm -hmm. doesn't overly complicate it and for the average Thanks, person man. that the over complication is what confuses people yeah absolutely like, man. i did it shot 256 you know I, as i understood that it's this 256 um bit equation yada 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 i i started to understand it more and more but go up to the average person and say shot 256 yeah it's so not the fast. first thing people need to hear you know, it's not the first thing that needs to perk their ears up about crypto. And uh, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for, thanks for those kind words, man. And that's, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. That's what I try to go for is like, if I can understand what's going on, then I think anyone watching the video will be able to understand as well. And that was like the big thing, man. Like, you know, me having a background in sales, knowing that, you know, especially doing door to door sales, not necessarily like retail sales where someone knows they want to buy a pickup truck. So they're going to a Ford dealership to pick out the pickup truck that they already know they want to buy like doing direct marketing going door to door doing uh, brand ambassador campaigns and we do street marketing and mall events and all that and it taught me that you really need to know the product you need to know everything about the product i always use the analogy of of a machine gun you got to have 30 rounds of information in the clip but you don't go to someone and just fucking empty the whole yeah. clip man you got to put it on single single fire right because yeah. you might only need two bullets to take that one down right so um and then if you're left with an empty clip you're screwed so uh i took the same approach with crypto i dove in man like spent an entire week like 40 hours a week of just watching videos trying to make it in a way that i could understand it and then once i felt i knew enough i was like man i can sell this like i can sell people on crypto and and then also with the, the you know the price movement we had in 2017 it was like wasn't really a hard sell <laughs> but, but uh yeah man and but educating is, them properly right is yeah is, is the right thing to do so well like easy, ken like, bozak ken bozak was my big inspiration too man just seeing him going around he was doing a lot with dash back in 2017 and just setting up people with an edge wallet and sending them a couple dollars a dash and ken was one of the first people like youtubers and and people on twitter i started following and i was like man i can do that uh you know i bought myself a couple hundred dollars of bitcoin uh and then i started going around getting people to download the edge wallet and i'd send them two or three dollars of bitcoin show them how it works and uh that's how i got like a lot of my my clients and customers and then i'd say i had like a whole thing pre-written out that i would just copy paste and send to people like all right welcome to bitcoin step one watch this andreas video <laughs> step two download this wallet step three this is how you copy paste this these are the people you should follow on twitter these are blah 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 and i had a whole thing and then i was like man i should just turn this into a website so my grandma actually uh being on my facebook asked me what what this whole bitcoin thing is like because every single post I was putting out was about crypto or Bitcoin. So I was like, all right, let me, let me explain Bitcoin to my grandma. Uh, and then through that process, I was like, that's what really fired me off to be like, I'm going to make a, a free website that I can send people to. And it's going to be just little short videos, super simple, just the basics of how to use crypto and blockchain, not necessarily all the advanced stuff. And um, that was the inspiration for my, my, education course which is like a free course anyone can go on and check out um but yeah man andreas i just can't talk enough good things about 
him i had the chance to meet him face to face uh about two months ago um it was like the highlight of my year man i just moved across canada to calgary um and i missed the futurist conference in toronto which i was looking forward to all year but my move ended up lining up like pretty much exactly with the the timing of that did you ever go to a futurist conference in toronto no i haven't i've never Uh, been to toronto oh no way have you been to canada yeah, I've been to uh, Vancouver. Okay. Uh, BC area. Yeah, man. If there's a Futurist conference next year, you need to be there, man. I'm telling you, it is the best conference in Canada. Uh, shout out to like Tracy from Untraceable for organizing those conferences because they're a blast, man. They're one of the few conferences that you can actually go buy your tickets with crypto, use crypto, interact with the conference with crypto. And she had like... 10 different food trucks parked out front that and got all of them to accept crypto for the conference like it was it's just like so many uh, conferences drop the ball on that and i think it's because a lot of conferences are designed for investors and you know having people present to investors and having investors there to hear the presentations and then there's conferences that are for the community and that's what more i think the uh futurist one's a good combination of both but it's got a really strong push on the community side. And uh, that's why they got, they had like just all the coolest people, man, were out there just hanging out. Cause it was like just such good company all around everywhere. And uh, Larry King was there a few years ago. Vitalik was there this year. So they, they just get wicked speakers and uh, create like a fun environment. So I haven't heard if they're actually going to do one this year, but if they do, man, you should definitely get out there with DBET. You'll get a lot it's of Canadian love. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and uh, I, I like it because it's like you know what is the at, at the heart of each conference like what is the sincere motivation mm-hmm. and to have the whole thing structured around like the the ability to use Bitcoin yeah even down to the food trucks parked out front yeah, shows man. people like especially people getting into the industry um, shows them that like look this is a currency that's spendable and things like yeah. this it's funny to me it's like sometimes i read posts online through stupid social media and things like this of what can you spend bitcoin on and it's like get a get a bit pay card or yeah. a, 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 um what's the big one in europe uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I don't know, but I, I've booked hotel rooms, air flights, bought gas, pulled money out of the ATM. Like, yeah, man. I mean, it's, you just gotta like, you gotta have someone show you, and that's the thing. It's not like there's not one a one stop shop yet for all that, but you can put the pieces together, man. Like we have in Canada. I don't know, like how much you know about some of the companies coming out of Canada, but we've got so many amazing crypto companies out here. We've got a government that's actually relatively open to crypto um, and not cracking down on it super hard. Uh, We've just got amazing, amazing ways to on-ramp people, buy crypto, use crypto. Um, We have a company called uh, Coin Cards out of Vancouver. Uh, I've had uh, Mike Oltoff. He's been on the show before and it's, you know, you go and you can buy gift cards with crypto and have them shipped right to your house. So you can go and buy SO, which is our gas station here. You can buy, go buy your smokes, your gas, your lottery tickets, your munchies, you know, you can buy uh, Amazon cards, cheapair.com. You can book your flights on cheapair. I've done it. That's how I went to Spain last year for the coins bank cruise. Um, You know, there's not a hell of a lot you can't do with crypto now. Um, and it's just going to keep I've getting better. I've lived off of crypto, like for the past probably two years, I've paid every bill, I've paid my rent, I access money through the ATM, I do everything. Yeah, it, um, yeah, it's totally possible. It's just, you know, you got to understand the services, the tech and the security behind it to make sure you're doing it right. So you don't, you know, a lot of people, you know, there's so many people that have lost money, been scammed or hacked or whatever in the space that it's like, there's certain little things that you should be doing to look out for that. And there's, you know, a lot of people on YouTube that share all that info, man. They want to people like us and Andreas that want to show people the right way to do things. And, you know, people that have good intentions because man, it sucks. I have, you know, we've seen so many exchanges shut down way back from the time of like Mt. Gox and in Canada, we just had a huge one uh, this year, which was Quadriga, um, which I still don't know what the hell's going on with that. I didn't have any. And money now Einstein or something. Einstein. Yeah. 
they've got sixteen million dollars locked up of user money right now, and um, you know we're seeing raids in Shanghai right now. Uh, that's been all over. Apparently, the Binance uh, office got hacked, or not hacked, sorry, uh, raided, but apparently it didn't. So it's like there's a lot of conflicting stuff going around. And yeah, I read a, an article today how CZ is suing somebody over this because it was fake news. But that yeah, could be I, I like, sure fake that. news on fake news. Yeah, well, maybe it was you that I saw. Um, but then it's just it's so hard to read through the lines because that could be fake news on fake news. It's like. Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully everyone's coins are safe. That's all we can hope yeah. for. So man, tell me a little bit about decent bet. So what was, uh, tell me about like how it first started over the first couple months of that, uh, that, Oh yeah. From the Oh yeah. Moment where you're like, I want to do this to who's on the team. And like, what do you guys, what do you guys do exactly? Sure. So I wanted to like give people the opportunity to have like, distributed profits from gambling and so originally we started with traditional gaming um casino type games craps or slots we launched we launched our slot machines in um i mean we had the beta ready to go at icl and we launched the actual main net uh, in 2018 but the challenge is just the regulatory environment was was crazy. And so we were waiting on Malta to release their crypto licensing for gaming sites. And this was delayed, like it's supposed to be Q1 of 2018, then Q2 of 2018, then Q4 of 2018, then Q1 of 2019. And um, with running a reputable company, you have to go through this regulatory process. So there's just this like enormous amount of delays where we, we finally figured out like, we can't count on this any longer and we needed to pivot and do something. So what was interesting is with my background in gaming, you understand how the regulators start to, how they view essentially online gambling and online gambling is risk, chance, and reward. So the key word there is chance. And it's when a third party variable is outside of your control that impacts the outcome. So the roll of a dice, the deal yeah. of a car. So Malta, Malta dragging their feet on getting the regula regulations in line was your chance factor that was like enough's enough? Well, that no, it boils down to like the chance factor goes to, so we made the shift from traditional gaming to esports. Okay. And so traditional gaming had that chance factor, whereas esports and the way we've structured the platform to avoid this is it's skill based. So with our platform, you can you can bet on esports, which is you know the world's most popular games: Fortnite, Apex Legends, PUBG, Dota 2. Um, I mean, all the top ten titles probably in the world. Yeah, uh, you, you can bet on, it, but you can only bet on yourself. And when it's your own performance and it's nobody else's performance or no other third party variables, it's not risk chance reward. It's risk skill reward. Okay. And when it's skill based, you don't need gambling licenses because it's not gambling. Like, so you're not. So you can only you're not gambling on something that that is out. Gambling is hoping something happens based on essentially luck. Okay. And if it's all in your hands and it's based on your performance, you're not hoping to get lucky. You're betting on can you perform or not. Yeah. And if you perform, you win. And if you don't, you lose. And that's the only things that can impact the outcome. So with that skill-based gaming environment, it, it we don't need licenses to operate in the United States and Canada and Europe and major markets in Asia. And so that opened the doors and that was the, the pivot that we took. But um, Malta dragging their feet was prohibited us from entering into major markets from a traditional gaming perspective or gambling perspective. Um, so we had to make that pivot and we're in the midst of releasing some node type programs where people can start to share in the profits and we can start to do that distributed type plan that was always the goal of distributing gaming gambling opportunities because like vegas wasn't built off of losers 
no. the house always wins. And that's like an historic saying that the odds are always in the house's favor. So when you, when you know the odds are in the house's favor, but it's skill-based, which opens you up to all these jurisdictions, um, you really have an opportunity to succeed. And then when you look at like the future of the gambling space in general, is the younger generations aren't playing slot machines. My mom, I love you, mom. Uh, play slot machines. Um, the younger generations don't, I don't. We play skill, somewhat skill-based games like blackjack and poker and things like this. Like poker exploded in the early 2000s because it was truly a mental challenge where yeah. you're not just pushing a button hoping to get lucky. You can actually mm -hmm. think and impact the outcome. And with like men millennials and Generation Z is they're, they want to feel influential. And that's in every aspect of life. If you ever employed millennials, um, <laughs> yeah. they speak up, you know, they, they, and I'm a millennial by definition, I'm on yeah. the, the edge of the generational gap, but I'm by definition a millennial is I don't want to just be told what to do and I don't want to be a robot. I want to speak up and I want to impact something. And it holds true, not just from like a work perspective, but from a gambling perspective as well. And that's why these strategy skill type games allow them to speak up and show the world that they're great and, you know, they have something to prove. So slot machine and traditional gambling revenue in Las Vegas is declining drastically. Okay. A lot. Drastically. Of yeah and, and like do you know uh, the numbers on that like where was it like 10 years ago and like do you know the percentage of how much it's kind of come down or um i don't have the updated statistics off, off the top of my head i could pull up my research from a year and a half ago and, okay. and, and um speak to some things but like what's the most important identifier of this is what what is vegas doing is like you look at somebody's positioning to understand their beliefs of where the future is going. If they believe the future is going in a direction, then they're positioning for that direction. Mm -hmm. And so Las Vegas is investing tens of millions of dollars into building these huge esports arenas. So when you look at a casino's product, the casino's product essentially at its core is its floor space, mm -hmm. right? Because a casino has this much area to make money. And it's yeah. like shelf how many space how many hell. games and slot machines can we jam in one area? How much money can we make off a thousand square feet? What's the best use of this square footage to to make money and to appeal to our customers? And it's like retail, right? Like the challenge with retail is getting shelf space. Is like if you want to be, if you design shirts and you want to be featured in JCPenney's or Macy's or Nordstrom's or whatever, you have to show that your product is the best thing for the company to be put on the shelf mm -hmm. because they're not going to just do you a favor. They're yeah. in the business of making money. So they're yeah. going to put the things that are most popular and most profitable on the, their shelves mm -hmm. in order to make money. And they're going to maximize that shelf space. The same thing holds true with casinos from a game offering perspective is like wherever they use that floor space, they want it to be the best thing for their business model because they have a limited amount of floor space. You know, these are physical casinos. The casino is X by X dimensions. And within those dimensions is the opportunity to make money. And they're gonna position that footage, square footage in, in what's appropriate. So like where we just were for World CryptoCon was at the Luxor, the Hyper, HyperX Arena, okay. which is like 10,000 square feet, they invested wow. 20 30 million dollars how many seats does it have like how many how many gamer fans can cram in there capacity is like 1200 oh wow yeah it's huge that's crazy it's huge and so they like rather than putting slot machines or blackjack tables in that space they put esports in that space so when you're building a business you want to think about where the industry is headed, not yeah. where it is today. But where's the revenue model it? for where's the revenue model for these uh, EA Sport arenas? So is it people buying tickets to come in and watch people play, or are they are they hosting their own betting on there? Are they allowing people to do bets on 
Like I just, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm really green to the, this, the EA, the gaming. Mm -hmm. I'm not a gamer myself. I just, I mean, I personally believe it's going to be, it's one of the best connections between crypto and any other industry. And I think that, um, one of my favorite books and movies is actually Ready Player One. I don't know if you've seen that one or read oh, it. Oh, dude, I can talk to you for hours yeah. about Ready Player One. <laughs> nice. But, like, um, I feel like, you know, we're moving into that, man. It's going to be, like, especially parts of the world, man, where they may never get the quality of life that we have in Canada, the U.S., and, like, more developed parts. You know, it's, it's going to – we're already seeing those parts of the world – a mass influx in them having cell phones, smartphones, and having access to the whole world through that. So I could see in like 10 years, man, maybe not, maybe 10, 15 years, like the world, us having like a, a more ready player one styled mentality towards gaming and it being, you know, all the, all the okay boomers are going to be kind of phased out and we're going to have like the generations moving up that would grew up more with video games and technology. Absolutely. A million percent. Like virtual reality is, and it's, it's a combination of virtual and augmented reality because yeah. augmented reality will probably be bigger than virtual reality. Yeah, for sure. Um, but those two, like if you don't understand what's happening with virtual reality and if you can just understand the basics of why and how it's going to impact our lives, you're missing the boat because yeah. it, it's it's the future well i remember like when the sims came out i remember getting the sims game in a cereal box and when i was a kid and like just that whole like feeling of having a second life and having you know being able to have a bigger house than you have in real life and you know kids and you know nicer car and all that stuff and it's like now we have the technology to make that even more realistic and also connect you with people all around the world right so i'm sure. excited man i'm like i'm a i consider myself somewhat of a futurist and i'm so pumped for like the next 20 years to see all the cool shit that's yeah. gonna come out it's an exciting time to be alive I it mean, is just man. look at like the technology that we have today versus what our parents had and Dude, you know so the quick. opportunities and the the amount of information like i remember being a kid like if you wanted information what did you do library man. You went to the library yep. and you went through shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves to find the book that you wanted and you read it yeah and like now you pull up your browser and you type in google anything you who won the you know the super bowl in 1978 and what was the score like yeah. imagine trying to find that information 30 yeah, years ago exactly. like imagine trying to, there's no way well i remember like yeah you see like these old i love watching old movies like old where they're like trying to solve a murder or something and you, <laughs> they have like a 10 minute montage of them in the in the library doing research pulling up like a hundred <laughs> books going through the newspaper scroller like <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah totally <laughs> Yeah. Um, pulling up articles, all that fun stuff. So, so, but, so back to D-Bet quickly, man. To... I'm, I'm a gamer. I'm a really good, I'm, I'm amazing at Fortnite, and I think I can destroy anyone at that game. How do I make money on D-Bet with my skills? Sure. So you just simply sign up an account on our platform. You fund your wallet with D-Bets, and you compete and win more cryptocurrency. And where can I get that easy. Where can I get D-Bets? Um, so OceanX is, okay. the, is the best place to get them. So we're a, we're a V-Chain based DAP, okay. essentially. And uh, OceanX is focused on the V-Chain ecosystem. Okay. Um, so that's our main exchange partner. We're also listening to like LA Token. I think you can even, even go back to like when we were on Ethereum. I think it's still traded on it. Um, um, IDEX or uh, IDEX or IDEX, I don't okay. know, it's been right. IDEX right. and uh, there's another one I can't think of it. It's been no so worries. long. No worries, um, man. So I've got some DBET. I've got mad gamer skills. I'm, I've made an account. I've funded some DBET. What's next? So you choose your game and then you pick what your challenge, what, what challenge you want to partake in. So it could be like, uh, I don't know if you play Fortnite or any of these games, but like battle royales are extremely popular right now. And that's essentially like a hundred people get dropped into a world and last person standing wins. Okay. So 
you would say, I'm going to finish in the top 15 and I'm going to have five kills. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not only going to finish, but I'm also going to have uh, five kills. And then you could earn five to one, six to one, ten to so one. You can, like, okay, so you can the choose. Of the challenge. Okay. Yeah. So we have a variety of quests that are available. And then we're releasing right now here in the next short term. I hate to throw dates out there because yeah, there's yeah, the right. unforeseen technology challenges. Yep. Um, we're forging the unknown. And as you forge the unknown, there's there's things that, that come up. So <laughs> our, our, yeah, there's the unknown. Um, so we have tournaments and head to head coming here shortly where you could compete in tournaments versus 20 players and, and try to win the tournament or you can actually challenge your friends okay. and say I want to play you head to head. I mean I, I played video games a lot growing up you know Madden Football and NHL Live and Tony Hawk and you know all those fun games uh, yeah. from our childhood um, where we would just sit in the living room and we would talk smack to each other. We'd say like, bro, I'm going to kick your butt. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. yeah, oh yeah. Let's get on the sticks and let's yeah. play. I'll bet you $10. Let's yeah. do it. And uh, that's such a fun component of gaming that that's essentially what we feature. And for the first time ever, the average gamer can monetize their skills and monetize their passion. Everybody has been focused on the professionals. And so you have professionals going through Twitch and things like this that are monetizing their time. But for me playing against my friends, there's literally no platform I'm aware of that I can, and I've done a lot of research, pretty confident in that statement, um, where you can challenge your friends and compete against each other and bet online. And the worst thing is, is like betting your friend 10, 20 bucks and he doesn't pay you or yeah. she doesn't pay you. So is this like it's a like, smart okay, contract I mean, essentially where like you yeah. have to put your money up and in order for people to, and so pe other people, they'll put money into a smart contract. It gets released to the winner. So how are you verifying the game? Are people like streaming it somehow? Like, so we we're, we work with a partner and we have the exclusive license to the blockchain space for what's called a virtual referee. So it's overlay technology that essentially sits, what overlay means is it sits on your screen and it captures what happens. Hmm. So one of the challenges with peer-to-peer -peer betting is determining the outcomes. They tend to be done by third-party oracles, okay. which means that there's a third party oracle just means uh, a third party that's not involved in the competition <laughs> what's up puppy um yeah don't eat, don't lick your butthole on camera come on have some decorum <laughs> i'm the only um, one who gets to do that <laughs> for sure you have to pay for it yeah um, so like organize first off like recruiting enough think of a worldwide offering where 24 hours a day people could want to play who knows how many people want to play simultaneously and imagine the logistics behind coordinating essentially third-party referees to be available at whatever quantity is is needed at whatever time is needed and then compensating them for their time it's like a logistical scaling nightmare yeah. And so what we did to solve that is by partnering and, and getting this exclusive license where the technology actually acts as the referee. So it sits there and it watches everything that happens on the game only. That's the only thing that you're authorizing it to watch. Um, and it knows like when the leaderboard shows at the end of the rankings of where you finished, it knows, did you finish in the top 15 or not? Okay. Every time you kill somebody and it says kill on the screen, it captures that and counts how many kills you have. Hmm. So if you need to finish in the top 15 and get five kills, it's going to count your kills as well as make sure that you finished in the top 15. And if then if that completes, then it'll execute the smart contract and you get paid. And uh, that's important for peer-to-peer -peer betting as well as online betting in general because I've bet online for the past 15 years and there's so many times the operator couldn't pay me because they didn't have the cash flow to, to do so. Really? I'm still owed money to this day. Like, what can you operators. even do? Like, what can you even do for that, you know? Nothing, nothing. That's crazy, Same man. Way. And so the company, whether you're betting against the company or each other, 
the company is required to deposit into the smart contract, or if you bet against each other, both parties are required to deposit in the smart contract. And when that smart contract executes act, acting as escrow, essentially, you're guaranteed to get paid when you win. Well, that sounds important. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, man. Who, so, wants to, who wants to win a bet? And not get paid, like, dude, I've, yeah, I, it sucks, man. That's why I only bet with the guys that work for me, like for my, my, my day job. I'll only ever make bets with them because then I can just take it right off their paycheck. <laughs> sure. It's like I have collateral. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're exactly. stuck one way or another. That's really cool, man. I love, like, I love the whole premise behind everything. How long have you – have how long has the gaming side of it been like live and have people been using it? Um, so we started the rollout. Uh, we, we signed the agreement to get the virtual referee, which ultimately brought everything together in January of this year. Okay. And we delivered a mainnet within uh, six months. Oh, cool. Um, signing that agreement. So our developers are incredible and have delivered time and time again ahead of schedule and our main net was launched on i believe it was june 26th of this year wow man so and then what kind of volume have you been getting like how many people a day are on there or what have been like some of the biggest days or anything so we we right now we're getting about a over a thousand um, player registrations a month. Wow. And so we have thousands of players already registered to the platform. That's good and, growth. Um, players, not only are people playing the game, but they're coming back and playing time and time again. So we have users that are literally playing a hundred times in, in a month. So it's one thing to get the customer, it's another to keep the customer. Yeah. And what's a good indication of a quality product is do people come back? And what part of the world? What part of the world are are you getting a lot of users from, or do you know those? Um, yeah, you know it's 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 hard to tell because we don't we we try not to KYC unless we have to. Okay. And the KYC based on regulations is when you reach a certain threshold of uh, winnings, then then we start to K, we start having to KYC because of AML law and yep. when they things of this nature so it's just we we have to abide by regulations so if they don't kyc we we don't really know where they're from but yeah. we can see it from like a community perspective is we have large concentrations uh in the united states uh europe the netherlands in particular um australia hmm. uh japan um so it's quite spread out that's cool, uh, all the way from North America to Europe to Asia. So what kind of marketing are you guys doing to get new new people on board and get the name of DBED out to the gaming community? Um, so we do, right now we've marketed specifically to crypto fluent people, people that knew how to use, know how to use cryptocurrency. We did the first event, uh, which was a huge tournament in Las Vegas, WCC, like we spoke about. And then we're, we have goals by the end of the year to implement our fiat to DBAT solution. So okay. what that would allow people to do is use traditional payment methods without an understanding of crypto to, be yeah. able to use our platform. Not having to go to IDEX to or LA token and figure out how their friggin' web website works you know i mean one of the challenges with crypto is there's just a lot of friction like mm. if you're a crypto investor and you're in the industry that's one thing but what about the average person that wants to use a platform mm -hmm. that's not familiar with crypto think of the steps like okay sign up a coinbase or whatever it may be and exchange fiat for bitcoin dude you should take have that bitcoin to the exchange and buy yeah. dbets take those dbets to the platform how many wallets do you need and then like after all these steps you're able to play like what's the key to us is like when people can bring visa to our platform and yeah. buy dbets and play the game yeah. this is like any online gambling site there is like you go to an online gambling site you give them your credit card and your your accounts credited mm -hmm. for whatever you purchased we're trying to replicate that to eliminate the barriers of entry so that any gamer can adopt their platform without the need of understanding for crypto and then through the course of using our platform they're going to understand the benefits of blockchain technology and it's a huge gateway to get people mm -hmm. 
in the door doing what they've always done and educate them through the process to convert people more and more over time. So like, you know, I just recently did an interview with Joe Blackburn. I, I listened to it. I loved it, man. I just had Joe on my show uh, last weekend, actually. So it was cool. I saw I had him on and it was my first time talking with him face to face. And then me and you were actually supposed to hop on last weekend, but we ended up moving it to this weekend. And then uh, I was able to listen to the, his podcast with you, and it was really cool. He's a firm believer that like gaming and our platform in particular is one of the keys to mass crypto adoption because... Yeah. Again, it's the gateway that eliminates the friction. There's billions of gamers worldwide. It eliminates the friction and it shows them firsthand without any learning curve of why blockchain is important and why this is superior, a superior solution to traditional online gaming sites. Have you, uh, have you ever heard of Tangem, the Tangem cards? No. So you should write this down or check it out after. But Tangem is RFID cards that um, are programmable. So uh, I'm working with a company called SwissKey right now. They're, uh, it's a project by Kyle Kemper out in Canada here. And they're essentially it's a, a, like an edge wallet mobile app um, with a few different security features and a few different options and a bit more coins on it. But it's linked with this. Uh, they partnered with Tangem. Uh, to make Swiss key cards so that you can actually use it almost like a debit card. Uh, but what if like, what if you were to like have a, a debit tantrum card, almost like a gift card that people could go to a store or like, uh, or like even sell it at like, I don't know what the gaming stores are around you, but in Canada we have like Best Buy and eBay game, eBay, sure. eBay and all that. And uh, you know, people could go and buy like this preloaded card that has, Fifty dollars of debet on it, and then go on, and then they touch it to their phone, and it sends them like an email with a link to go make an account, and it's preloaded with the debets, and then they can just go on to the website, make their account, and then like you know just scan the card, boom, boom, and then the money's right there. That'd be a, maybe a cool way to get around the the having to go to an exchange to. Uh, sure. So we've explored this and actually have a relationship in place that if we can figure everything out, uh, can move forward. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a great solution, but I think just a credit card without having to go to a physical store is yeah. probably a little bit better. Um, so it's just timing and priorities and things like this. Yeah. It's always, I, I'm such a like, I'm such a believer of online marketing and social media and all that, but it's like, I love the old school stuff too. I love just going around slapping stickers around and telling people about stuff face to face and like, you know, actually onboarding, uh, real people. And it's, I, I don't know. It's, I find it's a, there's always a good mesh of like this traditional guerrilla marketing coupled with online social media marketing and you can build up local community plus online community. So yeah, man, it's a, it's a cool project, though. I, I, I was introduced to them like a year ago uh, when I was in Barcelona at the Coins Bank blockchain cruise. Um, and shout out to those guys because that was like the best conference, floating cruise ship conference I've ever been on. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, well, it's better than that. But it was so cool because it was like, man, the, the, you go up to their booth and they're just like, all right, turn on the RFID detection on your phone. I'm like, cool. Guy takes his, uh, his thing. He's like, boop. And it automatically prompts me to download the Tangem app. As soon as I download the app, because it read it off that card, it had it was preloaded with a couple dollars of Bitcoin. It was like so cool, man. You just go up and like tap someone's phone and be like, there you go. Um, and there, these cards are simple, right? Yeah, and they're programmable for a lot of stuff. And I was like, my first idea was because I go to a ton of conferences and I love networking and meeting new people. And, uh, you know, coming back from a conference with a friggin' freezer bag full of business cards that end up sitting on my desk for three months. And I rarely go through all of them, but how cool would it be to have an RFID chip that you could just be like, Hey man, nice to meet you. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Here's who I am. Um, Hey, can I get your information? Sure. Here, Boop. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, website, email, phone number, like, there you go. There's every way to get a hold of me. There's all my platforms. 
Like I, I thought that would be a really cool application for it. No, totally. And it's secure. You know, people can do it with QR codes, but those are replicatable. And yeah. This nature. So um, that's the beauty of blockchain is it's more secure. It's transparent, you know, trusted, um, permissionless, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, so absolutely. Yeah. Well, hey, man, what do you think about the new Elon Musk pickup truck? Wow. Um, different uh to say the least yeah not my style uh for sure i would take like the you know the, the ford f250 f350 or just beautiful beautiful trucks in my opinion yeah um it reminds me of like uh i don't know why like a, a new age hummer do you remember the old school hummers That's yeah like, yeah, yeah. It's just like so futuristic looking, man. It looks like something straight out of like a video game. Like I'm, I'm kind of torn. I, I think they could have done if they were going for that look. They could have done it in a nicer way. And I'm still not sure if this is like the final, um, like the final version, or if they're going to be changing it. But um, it just seems like they could have made it a little sexier. But uh, sure. you know what? The memes over the last 24 hours have been absolutely incredible seeing all these different I saw, uh, yeah i think it was your meme that you created or it was like ico uh, yeah or, 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 <laughs> yeah i had awesome. a i saw this beautiful one that was like uh elon at age six yeah. he did this drawing <laughs> of like <laughs> that's a good one. i yeah. think it's a little like it's 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 almost like too futuristic for the time yeah exactly but i think that's going to appeal to a lot of people and i think it's like it's something that no one's ever seen before it doesn't look like anything else and you know what elon knows how to break the internet so yeah dude i had a blast i'm gonna share my screen for two seconds i had a blast because making memes is my thing so yesterday i made this one i can't believe it man this one's gotten shared 54 times that's awesome um and it has uh close to forty thousand views on it at, uh in in about 24 hours and then this was another one that i made i saw both of these <laughs> <laughs> and uh and your, your memes are out of this world like there's oh, another thanks, one i wish i could remember it but it was i shared it quite a few times um just a phenomenal meme. I can't remember which was one. Was it the Joker there. one, maybe? I make so many, man. I honestly like I don't know. This one was great. Too. Yeah. Like forget a head and shoulders. We're not yeah. doing the cyberpunk <laughs> truck trend. Yeah. Um, no, this is this is spot on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I love making memes, man. And honestly, like I feel like I'm I feel like there's a new industry coming. And it's going to be meme marketing and, uh, you know, branded company specific memes. Um, I've even been hired by a few companies to make memes for them, which is like, dude, how crazy is that, man? Companies are paying me to make memes for them. Um, and it's unreal because it's just like something I love doing. I've been doing it for since I got into crypto, uh, been making crypto memes. My first meme I ever made was uh you ever seen um happy gilmore with adam sandler oh of course yeah. and so it was that scene where uh his coach the black guy was like behind him with his hands on his hips and he's going it's all in the hips, all in the hips. but uh, but my meme was you know uh teaching new friends how to get into crypto and the thought bubble on him was it's all in the dips <laughs> yeah, I, I oh, saw as soon oh. as you started going to it i saw it coming yeah that was my um, first meme genius. i ever made <laughs> so. and memes are great because it's like marketing is about the best form of marketing is about an emotional connection and mm -hmm. if you make people laugh and smile there's like almost i don't i don't know that there's a stronger emotional connection you can make so maybe fear i think fear funny. fear maybe would be the fear, only other one yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but let's keep it positive. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. Smiling and laughing is, is much better. So you make people smile and have a, a, a correlation to a product based on that emotional reaction. And go memes. I'm yeah, awful. that's what I, I go it. for, man. I mean, even in real life, I just like making people laugh. And now, you know, crypto and, and the internet and social media has given me like a platform to 
reach out to so many more people and make so many more people laugh around the world. And, uh, you know, I look at it like my own form of a video game, man. It's like, I got to make the funniest, most relevant meme. I got to do it quick. So I'm always on social media looking for like what mainstream thing is going viral today. So like take yesterday, for example, we had everyone and their grandma talking about the Elon Musk truck. So I was like, I got to bang out some memes on this. You know, you got to be, you got to be quick on the trigger with it. But then, man, when I get all those likes and shares and comments, it's like, I'm getting the XP points. I'm getting, I'm hitting the, I'm hitting the high score on memes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so it was the Joker one. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. The... So I, I had to go look. Uh, it was the uh, McLovin. Yeah. With a Joker. Classic. Yeah. yeah that, that one got like close to 50,000 views in two days on just on that Facebook. Was amazing. Yeah. That was, amazing. that was a good one. Another one that went, I uh, actually had my first meme uh, be the top post on uh, Reddit for our Bitcoin. Um, and it was one of like, it was like a cat fishing and the cat was Satoshi Nakamoto. And then there was like, an, and then there was another cat behind him and he was fishing out of Satoshi's bucket. And then the second cat was Craig White. <laughs> Craig Wright. Oh, yes. <laughs> awesome. I can't believe this. Like, uh, nonsense. Yeah. yeah. So who, who do you, uh, who do you follow the most on social media? Maybe like, do you watch videos? Or are you more of an article guy or like, who's your, who are your top go-to influencers or people to follow? Um, I mean, it's, it's Andreas Antonopoulos, yeah. you know, hands down for sure. And then, you know, I do a lot of, like, I try to take in information from as many sources as possible and formulate my own opinion. Yep. And so from like a trading perspective, like Rich Wolf. I don't know if you're familiar with that name. No, I'm not a trader, man. I don't have the time. I don't have the time or energy to trade, but um, I know a lot of people love it. So Rich Wolf, is that a YouTuber that kind of shows people the ropes or what, what's he about? No, not many people know him and he's he's not one to search for the limelight at all. He well, he's going to he's gonna blow up now. He's going to blow up once all 12 of my followers start watching him. <laughs> he, he doesn't like recognition and things like this. So I don't know if he'll be happier um upset at me for mentioning his name but i mean he's literally the best trader that i've ever met in my entire life and he follows like tone vase a lot um nice. tone vase is wrong it's, a it's lot just, though, yeah. from what i've of gathered course. but it's it, like anybody that throws their opinion out i'll a lot people everyone remembers your failures nobody yeah. remembers your success 100 percent. that's why i that's why like when i got into crypto i was like you know what i'm not gonna be one of those guys that gives price predictions i'm gonna try to stay as far away from finance the only financial advice that i'm willing to give is fucking buy bitcoin <laughs> like sure. that is straight up my financial advice should i buy bitcoin yes you want to know when the worst time to buy bitcoin is never like just go get some Bitcoin. Sure. Man. Yeah, no, I agree. And I've always steered away from that as well. Cause it's, it's a sensitive subject. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's exactly. unforgiving too. It's, it's, it's their, perma they're permanently yeah. forever, man. So, so what's uh, you right 10 times and the two times you're wrong. Everybody remember, no, but everyone forgets that 10 times you're right. And that they, they will never ever forget the two times you were wrong. Yeah, well, especially when it comes to money or something like that, people take that pretty seriously. So, what's next for DBET, man? What uh, what can people come to expect for the rest of this year, and what's what's what are you guys hoping to accomplish next year? Sure, it's it's the we have we have some nodes that are coming out uh, here shortly that are like you know um, motivating, encouraging people to participate more in the platform and reward them for okay. participating in the platform the fiat to debat solution is yep. something that's really that's going to be us. huge yeah and then the uh the tournaments and the head-to-head -head, which will get that those three things we'd like to accomplish before the end of the year okay but we'll see it's extremely challenging and um it very likely could take longer than that but that that's our goal okay um, but we're ambitious and then coming next year it's it's 
releasing more games and fine tuning, continually analyzing the user experience and the user adoption and fine tuning that to make the user experience as enjoyable as possible and the user adoption as simple as possible. And that's in my mind and the team's mind what will benefit the platform most is let's keep the users that we have and let's make it more and more simple to get more users. And uh, you'll see that through all of our actions. Perfect, man. Well, I'm looking for, I'm going to definitely dive in a little bit more uh, into DBED after our talk. Um, Yeah, man, let's uh, probably going to wrap things up. Uh, it's my Saturday. I got some shit to do. I got a, this dog needs a little bit of loving. Um, so <laughs> I want to give like a huge thank you to you, man, for coming on the show, uh, and just taking the time to explain this stuff. And it was, it's been great getting to know you. Hopefully we can do this again, uh, you know, within a, the next couple months. And maybe once we get some more milestones hit, we can come on and talk a little bit more about that. It'd be cool too. If there's any, uh, I'll keep my ears open too. If there's any, big EA sporting events happening in Canada, uh, you guys should get out there because then I can come over and we can meet face to face and uh, that'd be wicked too. And then um, just a quick shout out to some of the people helping out and some of the companies that I'm working with or connected with or just really big fans of. So uh, Voltoro.com is is a gold to crypto exchange. I love that because uh, you can hedge your bets in gold instead of having to rely on Tether. Uh, Swiss Key is going to be coming out live soon. This is a Canadian project. It's a mobile app. It's super secure. Um, and it's, it's something that was built just the same way as Edge Wallet, which is my previously favorite mobile crypto wallet. Um, another Canadian project I love to support is PreSearch because um, PreSearch actually pays you in crypto to use their search engine. Um, and they don't save any of your browser, browser data or history. They don't sell any of your data. Um, and you can actually use the pre-search tokens you earn to pay for advertising and get banners put up on their search engine. So it's kind of a cool way for that. Um, Uptrend, I love shouting out Uptrend because I post on there all the time. Jeff Kredakis is a great guy. I've had him on the show. Um, and it's just like a new, it's, I don't know if you, uh, I've seen it, Jedediah, or if you're on there at all, but it's a great place for crypto social media. Not familiar, no, but I'll, I've been taking some notes here on the things that you've mentioned. Yeah, you. check it out, man. I'm going to have all these links down in the description box, so if anyone wants to check them out, they can do so there. We're also going to put the DBET link down there so people hopefully can go on and uh, start betting on yourself. If you've got mad gamer skills, prove it. Get on DBET. Prove it, punk. <laughs> Monetize your passion. And uh, so we the URL um, to to actually play the games and access the gaming platform is playdecent.gg. Playdecent.gg. Perfect. Okay. So message me that. Throw it in the description box. Um, dude, honestly, it was like really great getting to know you, man. I hope you have a great weekend. And uh, again, thanks for coming on the show. Guys. None of this is financial advice. Don't be stupid and take any of this as financial advice. We're just shooting the shit and talking about what we're interested in. Um, And guys, if you're going to buy crypto, just learn it first. All right? So have a good day, everyone. Enjoy. Thanks for tuning in. And Jedediah, take care, bro. Bye.